in Moscow now. We're at the airport actually, and we're waiting on some other uh, people to show up. And um, there's a few more NASA people that flew with us on the flight over here from Washington, and we're just waiting on them. And we will get in the van and uh, head to the hotel here in a few minutes. So this is what uh, we are uh, waiting. And a lot of people right now. <laughs> so. Okay, so you guys are ADCOs, right? Yes, that's correct. Attitude, Determination, and Control Officer? Correct. That's correct. Are you impressed that I actually knew that? I'm a little bit impressed, yeah. actually. Uh, so tell people what that actually is. What is it? What do you do? Your station, right? Station flight controller. Yes, so we work for the International Space Station. What the Attitude Officer does is that we control how the space station is oriented as it orbits around the Earth. So you get to point the thing. Exactly right. Is that intimidating? Sometimes. But we have a, a system that's very redundant, and so a lot of times it just flies itself. And we use uh, gyroscopes and thrusters to uh, maintain the attitude. So what are you guys doing in Moscow? Obviously, we're here for the land, the Soyuz landing. So what are you doing? Um, we're here actually to fly the shuttle. To fly the shuttle. Yes. <laughs> so uh, during the shuttle missions, it gets a lot more complex because you've added a, a whole new attitude control system into the mix. So basically, you're from two put, to three. You're putting a big giant weight on the end of the station. Exactly. Right? And so uh, with all of the changes that happen on a day-to-day -day basis with shuttle missions, we find it's easier to talk face to face with our Russian counterparts. There's a lot of coordination that has to go on between our team in Houston and the team here in Moscow. There's a lot of coordination. So we spend most of our days going back and forth, making sure that everyone is on the same page for the attitude plan for every day and when thrusters are allowed and when they're not allowed because some events actually cannot use thrusters because you can damage the spacecraft. Yeah. And of course we got a Soyuz undocking during this whole thing too, right? And that's a whole new something we've never done before, so we're kind of paving new territory with this one. But we'll do it sure flawlessly. It's going to be fine. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be flawless, isn't Make it? it look easy. All right, where are we heading? We're going to the ESA office in Moscow. The European Space Agency. Correct. Usually we have, this is our landing team meeting, right? Where right, we talk our landing about team face-to-face -face where we get together all the folks that are going to go out on the helos, plus those of us supporting here from Moscow all get together, tag up, and discuss what needs to happen and when. And usually we've got this at the NASA office here, but we are guests of ESA today because they have a big conference room, right? They have a big conference room and they have their own chef. Oh, that's nice. spacecraft lands, you see the, the little antennas, this flashing light beacon and combined HF, VHF antenna. Um, those have hatches that cover them and they don't blow off until about 10 minutes after a touchdown. So stay away from the vehicle because that hatch will become blown off and the antenna will come out and if you're in the path of it, you could get beamed by it. There was an incident a couple times ago where the video camera almost got hit by the, the hatch. So, Stay clear of the vehicle until um, you see the, the experts going in. Hey everybody, it's day four here in Moscow. It's uh, 7 p.m. local time on Saturday right now. You saw our landing team meeting with the NASA personnel that we had day before yesterday, so all that went off. Uh, fine, we got our safety briefing that we get each time we come over here about what to do, what not to do, when we get out in the field. Tomorrow morning at about 7 o'clock, we're going to leave the hotel and uh, head up to Star City, which of course is where the cosmonauts and the astronauts train, whatever they're part of these expeditions. We're going to meet up with a few more people up there, including the uh, Russian Search and Recovery Forces, and then we will all head out to Chikolovsky Airfield and then take about a three-hour flight down to the city of Karaganda. Now, sort of a crash course on how these Soyuz landings work. There's two different zones in Kazakhstan that these Soyuzes uh, can land in. There's a, no a northern zone and a southern zone. And in each one of those zones, there's two different cities that we focus on. There's sort of a, a main uh, bigger city that we fly into that we stay in usually about a day or two. And then there's a smaller secondary city that's sort of the staging area that we typically fly down to the night before the landing. And what it does is just put us in the helicopters uh, a bit closer to the actual landing area itself. Usually it's about a 15 minute flight at most uh, from those cities. So in the northern zone, you've got the main city of Kustanai that we fly into, and then also the secondary city of Arkalik, which is the staging city like I talked about. 
down in the southern zone, which is where we're going tomorrow, uh, you've got the main city of Karaganda, that, that's where we'll actually fly into tomorrow after we leave Moscow. And then you've got the smaller city of Jezkazgan that we will head down to uh, on the helicopters the night before landing. There's also one more meeting that we have to go to uh, that will actually be the meeting with the search and recovery forces themselves. This is where they sort of say that officially uh, everybody and all the equipment is in place, all the different helicopters are ready to go, all the uh, all-terrain vehicles, all the different medical support uh, personnel are all set. So that will take place uh, usually the second day that we're down there. So everything is uh, beginning to get busy. Uh, things are starting to pick up. Uh, this is where the fun stuff starts because uh, we get to start uh, flying tomorrow. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Are you looking for UFOs? <laughs> Trying to track on a satellite here. This is how Bill actually transmits a lot of his images back. That's why you get them so fast. Well, if it works. If it works. <laughs> In order for us to identify whether the landing sites were appropriate for the landing, Ross Aviation, Energia, and other entities conducted um, con control and uh, research of those landing sites. The NASA team has received their helicopter assignments. They're prepared and ready to support them. The NASA airplane is also ready to go and ready to return the crew members back to Houston. NASA также готов к участию в операции и готов возвратить экипаж в Houston. Prior to this meeting, I spoke to Mission Control Center Houston. They've coordinated with the other partner mission controls, and all the mission control centers are ready to support on document landing. And we're going to fly down to Jessica's gone tonight. Right. And then tomorrow morning, bright and early, we're going out to the landing. Yes. How many so, of these have you done? I think this is my fifth fifth landing. It's always an adventure, isn't it? It's, uh, it really is. Uh, something's different about each one. Um, the last one in March was a little chilly. That's what I the, heard. The uh, snow was blowing. The wind uh, wind was uh, very, very strong, 30 knots. And uh, it was uh, very, very poor visibility. So this one, the weather's been outstanding. So I'm lo actually, that'll be unusual. So I'm looking forward to it. One thing about this landing is that we're going to get some pretty unusual pictures of the space station with the shuttle actually attached. So how cool is that going to be? Uh, it's great. You know, we've been waiting for years to get that opportunity, and we weren't really sure that we would. We've been studying this uh, dual locked ops, which was what we call it, but really to watch the Soyuz back away yeah. while the shuttle's still there. And uh, we've studied it for quite a while, knew that we could do it, just the opportunity didn't present itself. And with all these vehicles coming and going to ISS, uh, we finally got the chance. And so I'm looking forward to seeing this uh, beautiful pictures with the shuttle. Is that a 134? That is 134. 134, man. You are supporting the home crowd, aren't you? <laughs> Gentlemen, would you like a picture? <laughs> yeah. A picture, yeah. yeah. Of course. Oh. Kirk. <laughs> Kirk has a gigantic bag. Yeah. What's okay. in that? What's in this? I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so you're staying behind while we go? 
tromp around? I am. I'm gonna stay here at the lovely Cosmonaut Hotel in Karaganda by the sea. It's a it's a nice hotel. It's a beautiful hotel. They have good food. They've got great food here. So how long have you been the DOR now? Since January of 2010. Right. Has it been over a year already? That is, I'm sorry, how long? A year? That's a year? It's, it's a year. Yeah, it's been over a year. It's been almost a year and a half. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, having a really good time. So you're speaking, speaking Russian pretty fluently now, aren't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> that means but the no. kids are. Yeah. The it's, kids are doing really well. I, I, I kind of I kinda get by and practice a little bit. I'm not afraid to make a fool of myself, which is a very important trait when you're over here trying to speak Russian. Otherwise, you'll never venture out. But uh, but the kids are in uh, Russian school, so uh, they've been like an immersion, and they're almost fluent now. Adapting like crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's embarrassing when you're seven-year-old, almost seven-year-old's correcting your Can language. I speak to you? I haven't asked you. What, what, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, and she goes, I can't tell you. I can't help you. <laughs> so how different is doing this over here than, than being the commander of shuttle and... and you know, oh, goodness stuff. gracious. I mean, totally different. I, I, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I, I know people think that uh, all astronauts want to do is fly all the time, which maybe for some is true, but I mean, I enjoy a change of pace. And uh, it's really a great environment for the family, and it's special to go ahead and do this. And it's really a lot of fun to go ahead and watch all the uh, astronauts that are uh, coming out for training as they go through their flows to get them out the door, to get them done the bike or to watch them launch, to watch them when they come back after yeah. their landings. And it's a really rewarding thing. And especially, you know, in the office, um, it's always been the case where kind of you're used to seeing a certain group of astronauts because of how your jobs right. um, all line up. And so there's a whole other group of astronauts that you barely see. And so now I'm seeing a lot of the folks that I normally wouldn't see that much of as they go through the station flow. Mm -hmm. And so. I get to spend more time with them, so it's been really a lot of fun. Because the training flow is like what two years? It's about two years. Yeah, pretty pretty yeah. close to doing that. But between when they start their language training for immersion and they start coming, because there's a lot of travel, especially for those that are going through as left seaters in the Soyuz, because there's so much more additional training to get them ready to fly the vehicle. So some of them spend a long, long time out in Russia. <laughs> This is a heavy helicopter and it's going to be under high temperature so I would ask you not to move during the takeoff and landing. If there are any issues please talk to the crew, we'll get them resolved. And please do not get off the vehicle until everything is off. Have a nice flight. <laughs> this aircraft is equipped with two emergency exits. One thing you have to have on these aircraft is steering protection. So there's our ride for today. This is the Russian Mi-8 helicopter. There's going to be, uh, I think, 12 uh, supporting the landing today. There's usually about, I think, uh, anywhere between six and ten of us that ride uh, in these choppers out to the landing site. But uh, of course, we came down uh, last night down to the city of Jessica's gone. We uh, spent a very short night here. Everybody got up at about 4:30 or 5 o'clock this morning, and um, part of our team went ahead and went down to the ballistic site which is uh, where the capsule would land if it comes in a bit steeper than normally planned. So they went ahead and left, and that's actually who's leaving right now over there. So they're going to take off, and then we're going to be airborne usually around the time that uh, we get confirmation that the deorbit burn has taken place. So everything's pretty much ready to go. It's actually a nice day out here. It uh, can get pretty cold out here <laughs> in Kazakhstan, but uh, today I think it's supposed to be in the 70s. And... Uh, Everything's, everything's all set. All right, Steve Hart, you are Katie's flight surgeon. So they say. So exactly how many pounds of supplies are you having to carry? 
Uh, I try not to think about it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's probably it's uh, probably only about 35. Now, talk a little bit about what exactly you guys will do once the landing takes place. You go through and you check the crew just to make sure they're feeling okay. Yeah. Um, ideally, our job is a mate tag repair manish in that we, uh, you know, we're able to just stand back and observe the crew member. The Russians are very thorough in what they do as, as far as immediately taking care of folks, uh, monitoring uh, blood pressure and pulses and such. And I'm happy if I can just stand back and eyeball my crew member and see that she's doing well. And if uh, um, if I need to get involved, I mean, typically that doesn't happen until we get into the tent. Uh, that's when the time when the suit comes off and we're able to do, to do a more thorough assessment. And uh, if we need to use medications, uh, uh, usually injections of Finnergan, medications like that for anti-nausea, or um, if it gets more, it's more uh, involved, then we end up having to put in IVs for uh, fluid support. And uh, in general, that's, um, you know, if it's been a safe, nominal landing, that's all we're up against. How hard is it actually to diagnose a patient that's actually up in space? I mean, you can't actually, you know, see them, touch them, you know, like a normal doctor would. So what, what kind of challenges is that? Um, it's very difficult in, um, in the ways that doctors are usually trained. Uh, I was uh, educated as a neurologist, and that's a field where there's a whole lot of hands-on and a lot of, you know, a lot of information you get from talking to the patient in the form of the history is helpful. So um, for our crew members, Usually we're limited to emails three times a day at best, and then if we're lucky, we get uh, phone calls on the cell phone and, uh, if there's something going on. But um, as far as being able to lay hands on it, we rely on other crew members on board to uh, uh, tell us what they feel or see. And um, I spend a lot of time looking at images, and uh, there's quite a bit of imagery coming down from on board. So and it's high resolution, high definition imagery. So I'm able to get in there and see things and ask crew members later on about you know, a bruised finger or a uh, you know, scratch here or something like that. Usually they've forgotten how it even happened. Now one thing I think people don't realize is that you're carrying a very important document, which is Katie's passport, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> You've got she can't, don't leave home without it. She obviously didn't uh, heed that. Because <laughs> I mean, technically it's an entry into the country, so they've That's actually right. got to do and customs paperwork. And exit. Though, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, talk, how many cameras do you actually carry? Uh, two. Take two, two cameras. Yeah. That's it? we got two arms, man. That's but it. how many? But you take a lot for launch, though, because you've got the remotes. And we stuff. take a lot for, for launch, yeah. So, yeah. remotes are on the pads. So, yeah. how many of these have you done? Uh, I don't know. More than you can count? Uh, I think every American landing except for one, perhaps. I think a lot of people don't realize that you know you don't simply just point the camera out of the window and take the shot that you guys because you're on the media helicopter with uh, the Associated Press, Reuters, whoever else comes out here, um, and they actually open up the door for you guys and they strap you in and you literally basically you better get your harness. There you go. Harnessed up. You actually lean out and take the picture, right? Yeah, just a little bit. How do you keep it still? I mean, seriously. Uh, just a high shutter speed and stabilizer and. A little bit of praying. <laughs> and once it lands, your job's not done because you still have to take a ton of pictures of the crew and the capsule. And the... If we're lucky, we'll get on the ground before the crew has come out and we can get over to the capsule and get some shots of uh, them opening the hatch doors and each crew member coming out. Then uh, hopefully, I mean, a beautiful day like today, they won't be in a hurry to get inside the tent. I imagine they'll enjoy it outside. So Unlike last time, Unlike where it was last blowing time, freezing where snow. Snow was going <laughs> sideways. sideways so. And the uh, first thing I saw last time when I got off the helicopter were snowmobiles going by me. <laughs> it's always a bad sign. Which is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, hopefully today they'll sit on the ground in the chairs a little bit and then get some shots there and then them carrying them into the medical tent where they get their Sokol suits taken off and uh, or their flight suits taken off and then hopefully they'll start sending some pictures right away. And then you we'll actually see. have to write the captions, get everything yeah, transmitted. Yeah, I've got those kind of in the bag. I'll just modify them a little bit to for the pictures. As long as there's no surprises if some random crew member comes home or something. Right. Let's <laughs> change the name. Exactly. <laughs>
So this is what it looks like right after Soyuz lands. You've got a ton of stuff going on. That's the medical tent right there that they've set up probably 100 yards or so away from where the Soyuz landed. Uh, the team here is already starting to uh, gather up this just huge parachute that's on the ground. And then there's the Soyuz. The guys are still working on getting the, uh, the hatch open. They're up there taking some pictures of the crew, which is still inside. Um, one thing we always try to look at is exactly how far the Soyuz has bounced. And as you can see, it hasn't really that much. And it's also upright. So what I have to do now is actually call into Houston and give kind of a live report on how things look here. Josh, uh, it looks like a gorgeous day out there. You actually could not ask for better weather, better operations. I mean, this has just been uh, fairly easy from beginning to end. Um, I mean, the weather's probably in the upper 70s right now. Uh, you can see they're taking the commander out now. They just uh, they just got him out of the capsule. You also notice the capsule's actually upright. <laughs> Mm. Beautiful. We haven't smelled anything in a while. Yeah. Sure, They're moving the crew into the medical tent now. They were out there for probably 15 minutes. They're uh, moving pretty quick today. So they'll go in there and get the launch suits off, put their flight suits on, and then uh, everybody's going to start uh, getting their helicopter and we're going to head back to Karaganda. And that's how you do that. That thing almost crawled up my boot. Welcome back to Moscow, Josh. Thank you. It's been a long day. This is Alexei Kupsov, our videographer. Good? Так точно. Знаешь, как говорят? Так точно. So what do you guys, you have to take the tapes now that we... Actually, we're, we're not shooting on tapes, we're shooting on digital now. We are uh, at Chikalovsky <laughs> Airfield, uh, just uh, about an hour northeast of Moscow, where a lot of the... NASA and Russian Soyuz landing group have returned from the city of Karaganda where they landed, uh, actually where they flew into after the Soyuz landed. Uh, it was about a three hour flight from Karaganda back here and what we're going to be doing in a little while is transmitting some of the video that uh, Alexei shot in Karaganda of the welcome ceremony of the Expedition 27 crew and uh, we did some uh, interviews with them as well and we don't, uh, we don't uplink from Karaganda, but what we're going to do is get that to a point as close as we can uh, here in Moscow and send that out to NASA TV so we can share that with people as quickly as we can and uh, welcome our crew back home. And they can watch it in the video file. The NASA TV video file. Which we love oh so much. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, you can watch it on NASA TV or at www.nasa.gov slash NTD. Hey, you could be a commentator. I could. You could. Except for the hair. <laughs> you know, every time that you come over here and you get to work one of these Soyuz landings or one of the launches, they're all different. They all have different personalities, they all have different challenges, uh, they all have different memories. Uh, but the one thing that I think is the common thread through all of it is that each of us that get to come out here and participate in this, uh, it's a high honor for us uh, to be able to do that. Uh, it is completely different from the space shuttle and totally different than the work that we do uh, on the shuttle and, and with those crews. Uh, you're a long way from home. The, uh, the hours are long. The work is extremely hard. Uh, you're really tired at the end of the day. Uh, but whenever you step back and you look at it and you realize that uh, you know, you're one of the small, you're part of a small group of people that gets to come over here and uh, help take care of this for NASA and to also work with the, uh, the Russians and also our other international partners like the Europeans and the Japanese, um, you know, you realize that uh, you're doing something that you probably never thought that you'd be able to do uh, whenever you were growing up. Not everybody gets to do this. 
and to be able to be a, a part of that team is something that is uh, pretty remarkable. You know, you're getting to go up close to uh, this small capsule that's all charred and uh, has just returned from space and you realize it was just docked with the International Space Station just, uh, you know, a few hours ago. And uh, you get to see the crew as they get out and they haven't uh, been on Earth in five or six months and you get to be uh, sort of part of the, uh, the welcoming party. Uh, they get to bring them back home. Uh, and I think that it's something that each of us that gets to come over here and, and do this takes pretty seriously. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. It, it really is.